to materialize. But this is the word of God. Someone answered it, Master, we've told all night and caught nothing. But your word, I will let down the net. You know the rest of the story. Go back to net, that, um, what was there before. So you see, we are looking at God's wisdom. If it says, with the humble is what? Wisdom. It goes a long way as to why we struggle today. It's too clear. Whoever struggles actually lacks wisdom. Simple. Whoever struggles or gets confused easily is because he or she lacks wisdom. Not because there's no wisdom in them, but the person lacks what? The wisdom of God. He only has the natural wisdom everybody has. We all know what to do to make money. That's the wisdom of men. But the wisdom of God will not let you do what they do. Thank you. That's what you put on the screen. Hallelujah. So, with the humble is wisdom. Hallelujah. Now, if you look at Job, no, let's go to Ecclesiastes 10 from verse 8. Ecclesiastes 10 from verse 8. We are still looking at wisdom, the other dimensions of wisdom. What exactly are we talking about? It's the wisdom of God that sets you apart in every place you go to. He who digs a pit will fall into it. Whoever breaks through a wall will be beaten by a serpent. That's why I don't like the word breakthrough. Breakthrough is not for a Christian. But today, she's trying to spring for breakthrough. Jesus never broke through anything. I can't, I've not read where he broke through. I've read where Iron Gate opened unto him, unto Peter, because Jesus' angel was with Peter. So why are we praying to break through? Because of our foolishness and pride. When you are, if, you are, if the Lord is leading me, I will never break through. Because there will be no reinforcement against me. They will all melt. There will be no reason to fight and kick till I break through. Because I am only following the master. In Acts 12, when the angel led Peter to, to the, get that led to the city, the Bible says the iron gate opened by itself. I can't see that in the Bible. I'm looking for a breakthrough. It is a pride in our hearts that is making us looking for breakthrough. That's hustling too. He, whoever breaks through a wall, this is a breakthrough here. So when people break through, they may not live long to enjoy the breakthrough. Because they have struggled all their lives to break through. Because of the pride in our hearts, we look for breakthrough. Our Lord Jesus never found a breakthrough. He never needed any. Don't forget. The scripture we use for this wisdom series is 1 John 2, 6. That says, anyone that claims to abide in God must himself live the same kind of life Jesus lived. Which is missing today. We are doing our own thing. Churches are doing programs, but you find that the thing is that people are not being prepared to live the same kind of life Jesus lived. Give us an NLT or MSG here. This is the standard. This is the template we must follow. No other thing. The life Jesus lived, the way he walked, the steps he took, his approach to life, to things. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Simple. This is the scripture the church of Jesus all over the world today should, should begin to build upon. How did he live his life? I so they are examining. All life is about relationships. I hope you know that. Everything about life. Mention life. In their specifics. Business. Yeah? Job. Marriage. Health. Talk to me. Education. Finance. Affluence, everything. All life is about relationship. Relationship with God and man. That's our vision statement. That's all. No other thing outside that. So that's why we've got to learn how Jesus handled all his relationships. All. Political life is all about relationship. How you relate together with other people wherever you go. 
Because all you're looking for is in the hand of somebody. It depends on how you relate to the person that will quicken how the thing gets to where you are. That's all. Everything you will ever need is in the hands of somebody. And some of them are your enemies, whom you have never to greet again. And God's wisdom tells you, love your enemies. That's God's word. That's God's wisdom. You say, I can't love my enemy. I won't do that. It's because you are too proud to accept that word. If you understand God's word, you know that being humble enough to accept that one that says, love your enemies, will, will give access to millions in a short while. Because your enemy may be carrying what you are looking for. And you say, you'd rather die than go to that person. We are, get ready to go. Pray that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. This, this is the pride of our hearts. That's why James 4 says, God resists the pride. He says, humble yourself or submit to God. Then you resist the devil and you flee from James 4, 6 and 7. Let's go there. We are trying to see something. Now, what, what, what it gives in love is far better than anything else you find common. Okay, give us, okay, look at it. It's common knowledge that God goes against the willful proud. God gives grace to the willing really humble. I love this expression. The willful proud and the willing humble. It's, a, it's common knowledge that God gives, God goes against the willful proud. The same God gives grace to the willing humble. Meaning what? The willful proud will never have grace to function. He has to struggle for everything. Grace is what, you know, is what you receive to do what you couldn't do in your own strength. Grace also means the strength of God. It's much more than a merited favor. That's what we, we are told. Merited favor, a merited favor. But grace is actually the strength of God. Second Corinthians 12. I'm trying to show you that one. Second Corinthians 12, 7 to 9. Paul said, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Look at it. So that I, would, I, I should not be exalted above measure by the abundance of the variations. A thumb was in the, in the flesh was given to me. A messenger of Satan to buffet me so that I would not be exalted above measure. Look at the next one. Concerning this night, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Look at verse 9. And he said to me, shh. This trouble will remain to keep you in check. My grace is sufficient for you. So when you find that in your business or in your workplace, wherever, somebody's just particularly against you. Now, check yourself. If you are doing the right thing, if you are not, then adjust and do the right thing. Do God's word. The moment you fulfill God's word there and somebody's still perennially pursuing you, watch out for that person. You can't survive it. Oh, yeah. But look at it. Rather than transfer the person or make the person in doubt, transfer you, he may keep you under that same wicked leader and give you grace to cope and to overcome. It says God told him, my grace, that's my strength, is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect. So you can see grace and strength used interchangeably. So grace is more than a merited favor. Grace is the strength of God. When he gives you grace, it's not just giving you favor, it's giving you his own strength, his own energy, his own dynamite, his own dynamite. That's why he's giving you to do what human strength would never do. So if anybody failed, he failed because he didn't use the grace God gave him. For my strength is made perfect. Perfect means 100% available in 100% weakness. Whenever you find that you are so weak in an area, that's when you qualify for God's perfect strength. Rather than complain and cry, just plug into that socket of grace. It, it comes in when you are vulnerable. It comes in when you are most at your weakest point. Look at it. Look at Paul here. Therefore, since his strength is 100% available to me, when I'm totally low and weak, he said, therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities. Wow. Today's Christian will say, no, 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 I have no infirmity. I, I don't want any ridicule. I want miracle. That's foolish talk because the scripture is a whole package. It's not a one-sided thing. It's not skewed. Scripture is, whole, is a whole package. It, we are meant to go through infirmities too. He said, I would rather boast in my weaknesses, 
in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you see challenges which, you know, you didn't force upon yourself. If you cause the challenges, then you go and adjust your life. But if you did not, if it's because of your obedience to God's word, begin to bless God. Because you will see God as he announces himself in your situation. Amen? So this is clear. We are talking about grace and God's wisdom. So if with, go back to Ecclesiastes 10. Ecclesiastes 10, 8 to 12, we are reading. Or to 15, rather. Now, 9. 10, because of our time now. Now, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. He says, but wait, wisdom is what brings success. King James says, wisdom is profitable to direct. So wisdom brings what? Success. Now, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It is wisdom that brings success, that brings victory, that brings, that brings testimonies. No wisdom, no success. So he told Joshua, Joshua 1.8, this book of the law will not pass from. Now, I have listened to a pastor preach from saying, you cannot meditate on God's word day and night. It's not possible. <laughs> and, I, and people were clapping in that church. The pastor church was looking at me because we had discussed that one before. I said, Pastor Mike, can you hear now? He said, nobody can meditate on God's word. You can't do it day and night. He didn't say do it and force it. He says, once you are awake, think the scripture. The man that's preaching this, this heresy didn't grow like that. He grew meditating on the scriptures. It became, I know the man, it became a colossus by chewing God's word. Now he's preaching that you don't have to think on God's word. Grace covers you. That's not true. People are still failing inside grace. Hebrews 12, 15 talks about people falling under grace. Why is it so in 2 Timothy that says, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That means you can be weak in the power of his might. People are getting weary and weak and weaker and weaker inside grace. He said, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. Why am I to be strong in that same grace? Because it's easy to become weak in that same grace. Becoming weak in the strength of God. That's the case with Christians today. They're now going to depression, commit suicide. Why? Because they are getting weaker and weaker in the grace of God. It says be strong in the grace that's in Christ. That means it's your responsibility to be strong inside that same grace. Otherwise, you can just grow weary and go flat. Yet, grace is there to sustain. Grace is there to uplift. Grace is there to do. Yet, God's people are failing inside grace. Why? The thing grace needs nothing from you. That's not true. Grace needs your cooperation. Otherwise, it will amount to disgrace. That's what they are teaching. This is grace revolution. That's not true. Do you have grace to live long? Answer me. You have grace to live long. Is that correct? Why don't you stay in the middle of the expressway and stand there and say, I have grace to live long? That's what? So meaning what? The grace to live long will never work if you become foolish. That's what it means. But to say grace covers you, do whatever you want to do. You can commit sin and it's okay. That's not true. That's not the Bible we have read. It says, shall we continue to that grace we are bound? It says, God forbid. So people are, because people are not reading the Bible, they like to hear such such, such, you know, skilled teaching so that you can enter into sin full blast. Yes, we're under grace. In Japan now, do you know, adultery is, 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 is approved. They say it's for business. You can sleep with anybody's wife if it's for business, for career, to continue. It is already a law in Japan. It's approved. <laughs> So if any, if, if any man is carrying that person's wife, sleeping with her, he says, no, it's okay. It's for our career. So said, well, what's your problem? You are the husband. Stupid man. Go and sit down. The law covers him. We are looking for that kind of republic here. 
We are looking for Jesus' Republic, where we can do what we want to do. And it's already been preached by highly placed pastors in Nigeria today. From the U.S., it started. It has spread here. And we are, hi, right on. People want to do money, five wives are already preparing. Because they've been looking for how to become a Muslim. Since they have a chance to live under grace by marrying seven wives, no brother, don't want to become a Muslim. You can be married to seven wives as a Christian. You are living under grace. So they preach. So if he contrasts sickness along the line, he can die also inside grace. Yeah. That's what they are saying. They, thank you. The Lord bless you, Brother Bolivar. He says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. This is Paul admonishing his son Timothy. Be strong because you can grow weary in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. The responsibility is for you to be strong in that grace because you can get weary in that same grace. Even though it's my strength. It's the strength of God given to you to be strong at all times. Test power they are doing against you. Hallelujah. All right, back to Ecclesiastes. It's just to show you that the teaching out there is, is dangerous, is, is, is terrible. You need to have a balance. And I'm happy that when I listened to uh, Crefordola in the U.S. last year, I was there when he came to teach in, uh, uh, at a convention. And he, he, you know, he knew people had been bashing for that, that heretic, heretical teaching. And he came up to balance it. And that really gladdened everybody's heart. He said, grace actually does not mean you should do what you want to do and mess around. He says, grace is there for you to actually love God forever. It's never to do what will displease God. Grace is given to you to do what pleases God. And that was it. Which was not there when he began the teaching. So the man that brought the teaching has amended his ways. The Nigerian copycats are still all over the place preaching that evil. And how many have been misled? How many homes have been destroyed? How many have pushed their, wife, their wives out and brought other wives in because of that grace teaching, grace revolution? So wisdom brings success. This is God's wisdom. Now, the other wisdom also brings results. <laughs> but not the success the Bible defines. How do I mean? We talk about God's wisdom and man's wisdom. The kidnapper has wisdom and he gets results, which he calls success. Now, he calls it so. The Bible does not call it so. Hmm. Hello? The armed robber has results, which he calls success. But God does not call it success that there's a result he's getting. The prostitute also has results. And she's moving on. She's saying, be wise. So. Hello, beautiful lady. How many men are toasting you each day? Only your husband? Big fool. Big fool. And with your fine face and your body like this, come on, let's go. Give it to one man, one senator elect. Oh, they are already sworn in now. Yes, <laughs> and you are in for some good time, you know. Oh, yeah. Your husband will not have because he needs money. This is wisdom, they will tell you. And why? It is giving them results. But it is not the result Bible calls success. Now, this is Bible definition of success. It only comes through God's wisdom. Wisdom brings success. You don't struggle for it. Once you have God's wisdom, you apply God's wisdom, success comes in. Wisdom brings it. I like that. Okay. Let, let me bring something to you. Did he have to struggle to come and get it? I brought it to him. That's how wisdom brings success to you. Say amen then. Yes. It brings success. Knowing that you fulfilled all that is required to be called a wise person. Oh my God. You are humble enough. We've been told that with the humble is what? Success. Proverbs 11, 2. Don't forget that. With the humble is success. Look at it. That's wisdom. Well, it brings success. 
So if you have wisdom, you have what? Because it brings success to you. Once you are humble, you have success because wisdom brings it to you. That's what he's saying. But where is the humble? That's the question you must answer. Where is the humble man? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, that's the question. If all we do today is that one, please let it resonate in you forever. It's helpful to know that even Jesus had to first humble himself. Oh God, that you might be obedient. Thank you. Go to Philippians 2. Now, if wisdom brings success, this man didn't leave his place and I brought it to him. Because he had paid his dues. He had paid his dues by having fear of God, by humbling himself, by doing everything God tells him to do, now he qualifies to be called a wise man. Heaven calls him a wise man. Then he's good to go. That wisdom is now having, which is God's wisdom, begins to bring success to him almost effortlessly. Without any much ado. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, if any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, that, 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 Next one, fulfill my joy. Mm. By being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, this is the word of God, this is the wisdom of God. Only the humble ones will accept this and live by it. Think about that. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. When you see people who don't go by this scripture, they are argumentative, they can destroy anything, they kill relationships very fast. They think they don't need other people. No, there's no one that should operate alone. It's not good that man should be alone. It's not only about marriage, it's about everything. You are not meant to operate alone. It's not only about marriage. No, 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 no. Marriage is one of the relationships on earth. You are not meant to walk alone. It's never designed by the Lord. Nobody gets there alone. Not even God operates alone. Isaiah 1 18, it says, Come, let us reason together. If God can call man to a meeting to reason together, then what are you waiting for? Now you tell me you can't do it alone. Why will politicians be asking for votes? The man that left them and abused them for five years, abused them, crossed the party, crossed the party, did anti party things. Now he says he's back home. Everybody rolls out the drums. And I'm wondering. How would they forgive this man just like that? They are wise enough to know that it's about numbers. This man coming in is having about 10,000 followers. <laughs> that will make the difference in the next elections. So, persons are wise enough to quickly forgive. Christians are not that wise. Oh, God. They're not that, they are still playing the music of hate. Remembering what the person did or didn't do. They would, even when you make moves for peace, they say no, because they are dull of hearing. They are dull of hearing. Politicians who, 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 may, not, who, who may be Jesusless are quick to forgive. You see, Matthew Kovibaka, that when he went to join APC, he was a saint, untouchable, sacred cow. He was wonderful, he did no evil. The moment he went back to PDP, he was an enemy with certificate. Think about it. No Ribadu was in PDP. At some point, he went to ACN to become a presidential candidate. And at the end of the day, he's in APC now. We're working for Buhari. He's a saint. He's never done anything wrong. People have left their former party, PDP, for APC to be covered. Once they join APC, their sins are covered. At the Edo, Edo Rally, Shemali, APC chairman, people came to declare for APC from the other party. And Shemali said, I watched him on television, he said, you are wise enough to come here. Here, you have not committed anything. You've done nothing wrong. Your sins are washed away. He said that on television. And who has ever proved them? Nobody. Now, these ones are applying what? Human wisdom. Obanikor is back in APC. He abused Tinubu like 
Every dead person must rise up from the grave. Now he's saying, Tinubu is the man. He said, he will not go to jail. And he's already a big boy. He's back in the fold. His son is now made, given an appointment. That's all. For you know, it's now you to become somebody. So they move from place to from party to party. Do you see what? The wisdom you also have. But they will still become foolish, I don't know, because this wisdom will never go take them too far. That's why if you play the game the way they play it, you will be anonymous. You can't beat them in that game. That chess game, they are too good at it. You are not wired for that kind of game. So go all out for God's wisdom in your own interest. Let's listen together. Look at verse 19. Addressed to the humble. Verse 19 says, if you are willing and obedient. Look at that. You will do what? Eat the good of the land. So going to Canada is dull. The good of the land is where you are. But you're humble enough to be willing and obedient. If God sent you to Canada, I'm okay with that. If it's not, do you know the latest about the U.S.? Are you aware of the latest? They're going to deport all illegal immigrants. That's the latest from Trump. I'm hard to to some people I met in the U.S. who have no documents in that country. And they say they'd rather die there. They are moving to Canada now. Canada is looking for people. Yes, they're looking for people. But watch out. When they have enough of people, they will chase others away. The wisdom of man would always make him a big fool at the end of the day. So why do what they do that would not sustain them? I would rather do this. That, will be, that, that can take some time to materialize, but I will, I will hang in there. I don't know about you. That whatever they have made in money, in terms of fame, they will still be looking for me to teach them the way of the Lord. I don't know about you. That's my priority. If you are willing, is this addressed to his own people who may be too proud to be willing? Don't forget, if you are not willing, you can't be obedient. If you're not humble, you can't be willing. <laughs> I'm marrying Philippians 2 to this one. It says, Jesus, when he came in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. So God has wired man, the entity called man, to humble himself. The wiring of a man, of any human being, is to that they may humble themselves. Let's go back to Philippians 2. You will see that when Jesus found that he was coming as a man, as a human being, he knew the only way was to first humble himself so that he could easily obey the Father's instructions or commands. Verse 2. Be like minded. Okay, 30, go on quickly. Now, no selfish ambition or conceit. In lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Look at it. Wait, stop here. Look at what will it be like if everywhere you go to, every person looks at the other person as better than himself. What a place to be in. What a, but this is missing to this church. And let's talk about church, not even company there, where which is a secular place. Do we use this scripture? You see how we cut ourselves over a matter we can resolve in the spirit of the Lord. We cut ourselves to pieces. I won't take that from you. No, that's not the Holy Ghost at work. That's a demon. Esteeming the other person as someone better than yourself. Do you know that's the beginning of the flow of the Holy Ghost? The power of God will begin to flow unhindered. If even if I don't share your views, I don't have to cut into pieces. But you see hate. You will see that. Are you trying to show me you are better? In what? Meanwhile, it says, see him as one better than yourself. Not you to tell him I'm better than you are. That's how we relate to ourselves. We we'll talk to ourselves as if you're trying to show me you are better. In, in what way are you better? That's what is in his thinking. So he's replying based on what he believes you are trying to say. You're trying to show that you're better than me. I will tell you, don't feed me. You don't feed me. And I would rather stay hungry than bow to you. Meanwhile, Bible says, 
God's wisdom says, let each esteem others better than himself. This place changed my life forever. This scripture. Brother Njoku is here. Bible says, Muewa, esteem him as son better than yourself. Do you know how he will feel when he sees the way I respect him? That's all. But today's church is to put one another down. Working against the scripture. So, we are the humble ones with whom there is wisdom. They are not there yet. <laughs> I'm explaining wisdom is so simple, yet we don't have because we are not yet broken. With the humble is what? Wisdom. Don't forget. And wisdom brings success. Proverbs 11, 2, and other ones we've read. Okay. Now look at it. Let each, this is God's word, it is God's wisdom. Let each, whether pastor or member, so when I say, yes, sir, to this person, oh, how are you, my brother? You're welcome, man. Oh, welcome, sir. Oh, praise the Lord. Even when I know I'm, I'm older than this person, it does not say let the older or the younger respect. No, no, no. It says let each, the older, the younger, the pastor, the member, the dad, the son. Do you know how many, how many parents don't respect their children at all? Because I'm your dad. Is that why you are his Alpha and Omega? He don't respect your child, then you also lose respect. Oh, yeah. The scripture can't be broken. If we are, it says, let each esteem. Even dad should esteem his own son or daughter as better than himself. This is the word of God. It doesn't mean you are going to prostrate to greet your child. No. But there's some honor you give to that child. No matter how young or old he is. There's some honor you, as a pastor, give to your member. You, know, you tell them it's by grace you are their pastor. They are actually better than you are. I think my members like that. You are better than I am. What I don't know, you know. So whatever you know that I don't know, you used to help me. That is the humility we need. If you, if you can take this into your life, you will see how and why things were easy for Jesus. That he did not commit any sin for once. He told them, you cannot kill me except I want to give my life back to you to, to, to strike. It's for me to let you. you. You are too small to take it from me. That was the humble man speaking because he had paid his dues. Look at it. Let's start this in church for, for a week, for two Sundays. You'll see how church will grow. Here will be too small to contain people. But because of the pride that we are enjoying, the sin that does easily beset us. A small thing will become so, you will begin to fest and you are wondering, where is this coming from? Can somebody say, oh, my brother, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> when the other day when the man that brought these chairs was behaving like someone who has never been to Bible school, he said, if you said you would do this and you agreed on this very color, have you done the color you agreed to do for which you charged these people? Is this, he said yes, is this color what's you? He said no, it's still red. Answer me please. The color you agreed upon is this, he said yes. Is this what you produced? Or a variant of that color? You brought a variant, have you stuck to the agreement? Then that's fraud. But a Proud person will never accept that. You rather defend that error till the error stops him someday in the future. Oh, yeah. Christians had better come back to brass tacks. That's why James 4, verse 1 says, Where have wars come from? All these wars in your life, they have come from your personal lust. What you are looking for, the pride in you, is the reason you are facing all these avoidable battles. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Don't they come from your desires for pleasure? What is that for pleasure? Pride. When we don't want God's own pleasure to have it, to have its way in our lives, we will seek our own pleasure. Once you pursue your own pleasure, you are going to have wars and battles that are avoidable. But back to that scripture, Philippians 2. Oh my God. Verse 4. 
let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Where is this in the Bible? If this is there in the Bible, why don't we just do it? This is God's wisdom. <laughs> this is God's wisdom, amen? Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Then verse 5. Let this mind be in you. It was also in Christ Jesus. Now, next one quickly. Who, being the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be called with God, but what did he do? He made, now this is the point, he made himself of no reputation. Now, not that he didn't have it, but he made himself of no reputation. That means he dropped all his qualifications. Who is a humble person? When he first took that step, by emptying himself of all the accomplishments, he now took the form of a, of a slave, a born servant. Look at the procedure. You can't skip any. After that, he now came the likeness of men. Look at the procedure. Being found as a man, what did he do? He humbled himself. Look at the process to humility. Ha! Ah. That's why it says, with the humble is what? God's wisdom. Because it's, going, it's gone through the meal. It's been cooked. It's gone through the fiery furnace of preparation. It's been boiled. It's been cooked. It's ready to be served for nations to partake and bless God. Being found as a man, every human being is wired to do what? To humble himself. So anyone that's humble himself is actually going into destruction. No matter the grace he carries. That's not our portion in Jesus' name. He almost became obedient to the point of death. What happened? Therefore, God also <laughs> has highly exalted him. May God exalt somebody in Jesus' name. Exalt you in a way he puts you above the higher mighty. That they begin to ask you, how did you get here? You were a young person a year ago. We never heard about your name. How did you emerge from nowhere? That's humility. And I see somebody here tonight. Amen. Being so skyrocketed by the Holy Ghost. Putting you there. Above the, the gurus of our time. The business moguls. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. That is the will of God. That's God's wisdom. It doesn't take another decade. No. It's a matter of a few hours. It's just at the press of a button. When God finds humility in anybody, he finds humility, that's all. Because only God knows what humility is in anybody's life. Once he finds it, he lifts you up. He, do, he has never stopped it with Jesus. He didn't stop with Jesus yet. He's still giving people names under the name of Jesus. May he give you a new name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Judge, Judges 14, I'll close with that. Judges 14. Okay, you may quickly go to that one we did in the morning. Joshua. That Joshua in the morning. The people of Gibeah came to tell lies. To tell lies to Joshua. They said, we, we came from a far country. They lied. Because they heard of what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai. They told him a lie. That they, 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 they put their sandals in dirt, their clothes were torn, and they said, We came from a far place. Make a covenant with us. They were lying. They lived next door. They kept lying and lying, got their food. It was moldy, it was all packaged very well. Wisdom of men. You can't beat these people. You are in their midst every day. Don't. Try to do what they do. Don't try to join them. It will not profit you. All patched sandals on their feet, all garments, everything was old. Even the bread they took was dry and moldy. It was all stage managed. Just to deceive Joshua. And they were able to deceive the man. He went to Joshua and said, come, we've come to you from a far country. Make a covenant with us. Next, quickly. Then the men of Israel said, perhaps you dwell among us. See, the Holy Ghost, even though it was not there in the Old Testament, everything is still was said about the Holy Ghost, was Jesus there. God was like, 
don't you live around us here in our midst? How can we make covenant with you? They were almost there, but they didn't process it. Then Israel said, Joshua said, he said to Joshua, we are servants. Joshua said, who are you? Where do you come from? They were almost fingering the thing that these were liars. These were, were, were deceivers. But they didn't process it very well. What happened? We came from a very far country. Da, 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 da. We've heard of your fame. What God did in Egypt. Go on, go on please, quickly. And all that you did that, verse 11. Look at this one. Very serious. Our elders said, we should tell you. We should take provisions with you. Da, 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 da. Please make covenant with us. And verse 12. And they, they, they got Joshua. This bread of ours we took hot for our provision. They were lying. It was hot when we left. It's now so cold and dry and moldy. Ah, ah. This was the craftiness of man. The people you want to beat, you can't beat them. Go on, please. These wine skins, which we feel we were, were new and see, they are torn. Our garments and our sandals have become old because of the very long journey. They were lying. They lived next door. Then the men of Israel took. <laughs> they said, okay, that's okay. We are convinced. That's why no matter how smart Americans or British people are at the embassy, African man could still beat them. <laughs> no matter how sharp they think they are, we still beat them to it. I mean, but you don't, don't join them to do that stuff. Don't do that. Because you are above all that. I plead with you. Because they will still catch you one day. When they now catch you, when they catch you, how do you undo that? When they catch you, would you be able to face the shame? Hallelujah. They were still lying. The men of Israel did what? Took part of their provision, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. This is my challenge here. They did not ask the Lord for his counsel. Lord, we seem to be convinced these people are from a far country. What are you saying? If you want to join the people in their own wisdom that we all carry, you'll be defeated. Why should you that came from heaven join them to use wisdom that, that is demonic and sensual? It's demonic. It says this wisdom did not come from heaven. It's demonic. It's earthly. It's sensual. And it's devilish. It's the wisdom of man. See what they used here. Joshua was deceived. Everybody fell for it. They joined the eating with them. They did not ask cancer of the Lord. Read the rest of the story. Beloved, it's important we get it right. Don't try to join those people out there. Christians have lost their identity card already. Let us say no. Let's pick back our identity. There's identity theft all over the place. Let's grow above that level. You can be distinguished by applying God's wisdom. What's God's wisdom? The word of God. It says, with the humble is what? Wisdom. Wisdom brings success. It is not that common wisdom. It's the wisdom of God, which is available in his word. If you go by God's word any day, any time, you may not be able to quickly have a testimony now, but it it's going to be enduring when it comes. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrows. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. It does not add sorrows to it. We are not going to change figures to do what? To tell lies before an ordinary man. Isaiah 2.22 It says, Seize from man whose breath is in his nostrils. He can't even give account of his own life. You are looking for him to, for appro approval. No. Honor all men, but don't make any man your almighty God. Don't do it. Respect them, but don't worship them. Sever yourself from such a man whose breath is in his nostrils. For of what account is he anyway? Look at the scripture. He's the man we are looking for. That's going to look for your body, to sleep with you, or take money from you, deceive you, and all that. At the end of the day, you lose fellowship with God. And with man. That's what happens eventually. 
Conscience is, 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 is seared. This is the word of God. Now, look at first chapter 17. It says, respect is honor all men. That's what we owe people. You have to honor people, respect them, but don't ever fear anybody. Honor all people, all people, your house girl, your driver. It says, honor everybody. Listen, when I hear what drivers do, housemates do, if I condemn them, I ask myself, was this person ever given any due honor? See how we treat house girls today, house boys, as if they, nobody gave birth to them. The scripture says, honor all people, even your gardener. Honor that person. It is commanded. This is God's wisdom. <laughs> See how we treat even drivers. So when people thought we had hired drivers to drive our buses, say, driver, are you okay? I say, I'm stopping here. You decrease. Anyway, that was a bank general manager who is serving God in this church. You know some of them. Well, I one of them is here. They were our pilots when our bus, buses first came. Bank regional directors were piloting our buses, but nobody knew them. And they would just park. Because in our church, service is key. They would park. I said, ah, but are you deaf? Oh, I'm sorry, man. Is it here? That was a bank. Look at this man sitting on there. Regional director of a bank. As a driver of our bus. And some other people, Jerry and Go, or two here. Because of service and humility. Because we are used to treating people like that anyhow. They didn't know they were talking to those who could employ them and pay them for five years nonstop. So, you mean, no be driver, you be. No be driver. He's serving God. Hey, we. We no no say you be a girl. Must he must he get to that level? Because in GMC service is major. We don't care who pastor is. That's why you see me serving. I can I can sweep the floor. I, the other day I was sweeping, washing the, the toilet there just a few days ago. It cost me nothing. I'm serving my father's house. What do you do? Nothing do me. No, I'm okay. But people, because we in Africa we are used to. Saying, I better pass my neighbor. This gem, where I buy now? What did my neighbor get? My own at 1.5. Even at 1.2. I better pass my neighbor. I don't have my own. It's the mentality of, an, of, of, of somebody who's, who's a mediocre person. You better pass your neighbor? No. Look for how to bless your neighbor. The Bible says, see your neighbor as your own better than yourself. Philippians, Philippians 2, 2 and 3. Look at your neighbor's son better than you are. I want to stop because of our time. Beloved, God's wisdom will always put you above all competitors, all stress. Even when it's not working, it is working. The day it will pay off, you see many saying, can we know where you worship God? You, an exemplar of excellence. We've watched you for some distance. You are just distinguished. Shall we just... Come with you. You've, you, you you've, you've proved to be a, a Christian. <laughs> the same people insulting you, spitting at you. They will say, ah, you are a different person. Who's your pastor? That's the next question. Where's your church? You see church grow like ants are gathering over sugar. It is the wisdom of God they're looking for in you today. Well, if they see today in you, this, anywhere you grow, they want to go, they want to be there. You'll be an influencer of people if you apply God's wisdom. If you join them as the men of Gibeah deceived Joshua, you can't beat them in their own human wisdom. They've, they know the anatomy, physiology, art and science of deceit. They know it. You can't beat them. But when it comes to God's wisdom, they will always come to you and say, shall we hear from you? As young as you are, you appear to be sound. Are you a pastor? You say, I'm not a pastor. What? And you are this loaded. Every door opens to the humble person. And every door closes to the proud person. Oh yes. The door of favor opens to a humble person any day. Any day. Any day. I mean any day. Doors of favor will open to you almost effortlessly. But doors of good things are shut against the proud person. Because it is God himself that, that fights the proud person. God fights the proud. He resists the proud. And gives grace, his own strength, to the humble. Think about it. 
Use God's wisdom. It's available. James 1.5. Ask him. He gives all askers generously. Because he's waiting to give his wisdom as against your wisdom. Once you ask, he quickly gives you. But if you are too big to ask, that's all. He will not force it on you. We all need wisdom. Wisdom of the mother. Wisdom of the father. Wisdom of the husband. Wisdom of the wife. You see, Connie, 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 who are you? But when you, we all die to our wisdom, embrace God's wisdom, you will see peace. You will see peace. Hallelujah. <laughs> A woman told me not long ago. Sorry, I, I'm taking beyond seven now. That's this testimony, I'll be done. Ah, he said, sir, at the camp, you were talking wisdom, and I felt condemned. I said, I didn't condemn. He said, I felt condemned. Ah, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't condemn. I was only, he said, you loved me, but I, I saw myself as, ah, I've been taking my husband's money. But you always say there's no money. And I would check his pocket, I would see thousands. And he was telling me no cover in the house. So I've chosen not to, not to fight. I would just go there, check, check 5,000. And he would not talk because he would not know I've taken the money. I would not want to complain because complaining means, oh, you mean there was money here. But she was also enjoying the thievery, you know. <laughs> if you allow me. He said, but now you say we should not do it again. I said, number one, it is wisdom of the husband that he used. You also have used wisdom of the wife. It is a corny person and a crafty person. If he's so wise, he keeps his money. You're also wiser by looking for the money. So you can't talk because you say, eh. if I talk, I say, nice, so money they here before. What do I do? I said, well, the point is, it was never his own money. It was for both of you that came through him. And it's also for both of you that came through you. No husband has own money in any marriage. When people don't know God's wisdom, they segregate. You don't have your own. Look at the architect of today. He said, Master, Madame's bedroom, it is stupid and dull. In God's own architecture, there's no Madame's room. It's one room they have, husband and wife. But they don't follow God's own design as an architect. They follow their own. Madame's bedroom. That means the husband goes there to meet with her in the inner room. She can't come to her guest room. That's not Bible architecture. It's only one room. Praise the Lord. Imagine how many homes have been destroyed because of Madame's bedroom. So when the husband is also not there, she too will lock up her room. Out of a case involving a pastor. Whose room the wife can't enter? This happened in 2019. His room, because he has a room, call his, call his own. The wife cannot enter. The day he forgot his key. No prayer room. His own bedroom. Which prayer room? Even his prayer room. What else is he praying? What prayer is he praying that his wife cannot enter? Are they not meant to be in agreement? Which prayer room? Except he's asking, he's consulting which of endor there. And if there's no witch in that room, why can't the wife enter? What is he worshipping? He forgot his key. His key. The room key. The wife now went there. He came back and began to curse her. What were you doing in my room? And she asked him, You mean it's your room or is it not our room? It's not our room, it's my own. That's the senior pastor of a church. Who is using the wisdom of the husband as against wisdom of God? I want to leave you here because of our time. Think about it. It's time to be dead to human wisdom because it will always come to zero. First Corinthians 2 6. It will always come to useless point. We are that wisdom can no longer make you a good person but a fool. Look at it. We speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not wisdom of this age. Yeah, new school. There's no new wisdom anywhere. No new school wisdom. It is the old wisdom of God. Look at it. No, that of the rulers of this age, all of which what will be coming to nothing. All wisdom will still be. Below zero, only God's wisdom will last forever. Let's pray. Let us pray. Precious Jehovah, we thank you for tonight. We exalt you. We magnify you. I want you to pray for yourself. I don't know what you heard. I don't know what God spoke to your heart this evening. 
I don't know in what way this may have mirrored your life or any area of your life. I don't know. But I know God has spoken to you tonight just as he has spoken to me. What will be your decisions from this moment? What would be your next line of action? You can never be wrong. They may mock you and say, hey, she be we talk, say she soon go soon bow. Don't worry. A humble person is always a winner. The humble are always, he says, with the, wisdom, with the humble is wisdom. <laughs> and so with the proud is foolishness. Simple. When you accept God's word, I say, Lord, I accept your word. It's hard. I receive grace to do this word. I tell you, you'll be able to do it. They may mock you. They will always eventually become influenced by you. They will surrender to you. They will come and beg you. See somebody here tonight, somebody who has hurt you badly and is so arrogant in that area is coming to beg you in tears. person is coming to beg you. I just beg you, Forgive before he or she comes. Forgive before he comes. He is coming. He will send people to beg you first in advance. Right now, let's go. Let's go. Please, let's go. Take the upper hand, which is the wisdom of God. Jesus humbled himself. Humble yourself, please, and accept God's word. That is what he wants from us. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches honor and life. Thank you Father for tonight. In Jesus name. Thanks for coming. Good night. Love you.